Hi, everyone, and uh, welcome to our online 2024 uh, SPM course for MEG and EEG. Uh, my name is uh, Vladimir Litvak. I'm one of the uh, developers of SPM. Uh, and uh, today I will just give you a short introduction uh, to the history of SPM and uh, a bit of a preview of what is expecting you in the next uh, uh, four days. So, SPM is a toolbox uh, for neuroimaging data analysis uh, that uh, is uh, probably the oldest one in the field. So it was originally conceived by Carl Freestone uh, for statistical analysis of PET in the Hammersmith Hospital in the late 80s. Uh, and since then, we've had a series of uh, different versions and the extensions of SPM to different uh, problems uh, in neuroimaging. So this is one of the first uh, SPM uh, papers where they compared uh, people uh, data from people looking at uh, color images to data from people uh, looking at grayscale images and uh, found a center of color uh, in the brain. So that's uh, at that time that this kind of analysis was sufficient to get uh, to get your nature paper. Unfortunately, this is no longer the case today. We need to do something more uh, sophisticated. And uh, with time uh, in uh, for uh, fMRI and uh, PET and uh, structural images, uh, this uh, pipeline emerged, uh, which uh, consists of uh, special normalization, smoothing, uh, statistical analysis using general linear model, uh, and then uh, thresholding based on uh, uh, random field theory. Uh, and this uh, framework in general is applicable not only to neural imaging, but uh, to a wide range of problems, basically to any kind of uh, spatially extended statistical process, so something smooth, uh, uh, either in one or two or three dimensions. And uh, here are some more exotic examples of uh, SPM use over the years. So some people used it for uh, statistics on uh, bond density, uh, other people on uh, parametric mapping of, uh, of uh, step uh, kind of parameters. Uh, so anything that's, uh, that basically uh, is contiguous and extended in uh, space, time, frequency, uh, etc., can be analyzed using SPM. And in particular, uh, in this course, we'll focus on application of uh, statistical parametric mapping to EEG and MEG data. And uh, to, to get our data to the stage where it can be uh, processed by SPM, uh, we need uh, first to perform a, a set of uh, pre-processing steps, which are not different uh, in SPM from what is implemented in other uh, toolboxes, uh, such as conversion, uh, epoching, uh, filtering, etc. Uh, and uh, then we eventually we end up with uh, images, uh, which can be either uh, images in, in time and uh, space, as you will uh, see in detail uh, uh, later today. Or it can be images in time frequency, which uh, probably many of you are familiar with. Or this can be also images of uh, source reconstruction, uh, which uh, are more reminiscent of uh, uh, the kind of images that are uh, dealt with also in other modalities, such as fMRI uh, and PET. Uh, then uh, these images uh, can be entered into a general linear model. Uh, and uh, what exactly that means and uh, what analysis can be uh, represented in this way, I think you'll hear uh, about today in the subsequent uh, talks. But basically, this is a statistical uh, tool which allows you to generalize uh, ideas like uh, t-test or ANOVA or multiple regression uh, in the same framework and combined possibly elements from all of those uh, statistical tools. Uh, uh, then uh, uh, this uh, uh, the general linear model analysis allows you to uh, uh, generate images of effects, of uh, statistical images of experimental effects, which uh, can then be also converted into parametric images of uh, F statistics or, uh, or T statistics uh, using uh, uh, contrasts. And uh, then uh, to those statistical images, you can apply random field theory uh, to produce uh, thresholds. And eventually, those thresholded images actually uh, what uh, represent uh, statistically significant effects, and this is what you can report uh, in your publication. 
So this is uh, what we will discuss uh, during, uh, during most of the day today. So I won't get into too many details. So we'll see how you can transform uh, your scalp uh, images uh, using uh, time as a third dimension and produce volumetric images. Or you can also apply it to uh, time frequency images. Uh, so tomorrow we will also have a quite extensive uh, demo of uh, how you would apply a general linear model to a realistic uh, group uh, data set. Uh, and then we will switch gears and we will talk uh, also about uh, Bayesian inference and particularly about two applications of Bayesian inference uh, in SPM. So the, uh, tomorrow we will talk about uh, application of Bayesian inference to uh, e M mega EG uh, inverse problem. So I think that the general idea behind the uh, Bayesian inference is that if you have a model, a uh, forward model that allows you to define exactly how your data is generated, uh, you can then, uh, you have a mathematical apparatus to invert this model and from data go to uh, parameters uh, of uh, this model. But in source analysis, those parameters usually are uh, a set of uh, cortical uh, current source density, so the levels of cortical activity. Uh, that uh, generated your EG omega uh, results. And uh, the kind of images that you could generate uh, with uh, Bayesian source analysis, you can then also feed into this classical uh, statistical GLM uh, based pipeline. Another topic uh, that will be discussed tomorrow is uh, OPM, uh, optically pumped magnetometers or wearable uh, MEG. So OPMs are very new and uh, hot uh, topic right now in the field. And uh, here in, uh, in our center, uh, we have a very active uh, OPM uh, group and a lot of the methods that they're developing uh, are uh, uh, distributed by SPM. So we'll hear people who are interested in this can hear uh, uh, tomorrow about the basics of OPM and uh, some of the denoising and uh, uh, pre-processing uh, methods that uh, are implemented currently in SPM. And uh, finally, the third day uh, will be dedicated to DCM or dynamic causal modeling. Uh, so DCM is uh, a kind of a further extension of this Bayesian inference idea uh, that uh, we will discuss tomorrow in the, quarter, in the context of source reconstruction. Uh, so the idea is, uh, I think the, idea, the basic idea is the same, just the models uh, that you will use are more sophisticated, so they can be uh, re physically realistic uh, neural mass models that can generate uh, signals like evoke responses or realistic power uh, and cross spectra for steady state data. Uh, and uh, maybe we'll also mention this more historical, uh, simpler variants of DCM, uh, DCM for induced responses and uh, DCM for phase coupling. So this is uh, in short, uh, what you will do during, you uh, will uh, learn during the course. So after you finish the course, you, you, there are a lot of resources uh, that you can access to continue uh, learning and continue using SPM. So first of all, this is uh, SPM uh, website uh, that you can uh, properly uh, already uh, familiar with. Uh, and uh, there's also now the development website on GitHub uh, that uh, where you can get uh, the latest SPM version. We currently support uh, MATLAB versions from 2008 to, to the latest version of uh, 2024 on Linux, Windows, and Mac. And uh, for people who don't have access to MATLAB or they want to run uh, SPM on a cluster, uh, for which uh, some people need many licenses, uh, we ha also have a standalone uh, version. So this is uh, SPM website uh, where you can uh, find all the other links to all the other SPM resources. You can download the software, this documentation, bibliography, and uh, some example data sets. Uh, this is uh, SPM GitHub. Uh, so this is more for advanced power users and for developers uh, who can get uh, the latest development version of SPM. Uh, there's a possibility there to report and uh, discuss uh, different bugs and issues. And you can also contribute to software and documentation. So I think uh, if you want to contribute documentation, it's uh, already possible now. Uh, we are sorting out some legal issues that have uh, to do with external contributions to the code. And hopefully uh, this option will be open uh, in the very near future. 
Uh, there are several sources uh, of additional documentation for SPM. So first of all, we have uh, SPM PDF manual that is included with SPM in the uh, MAN uh, folder. So this uh, PDF manual is a bit of a legacy uh, thing that we're trying to move away from uh, in a way that I will explain in a moment. But uh, still, if you're, if you're looking for a very comprehensive uh, source of information uh, that is still more or less up to date, uh, you can look at it. Uh, there's also there are several uh, papers that came out over the years. So there's uh, uh, this uh, paper from 2011 about AG and make data analysis in SPM 8. So this is it talks about uh, a bit older version of SPM, but most of the things that are in this paper are still uh, uh, relevant. And there's also a more recent paper uh, about uh, multimodal uh, group analysis of uh, EG and fMRI in SPM 12. So this is a really elaborate example that we will also use in this uh, uh, course partially to demonstrate uh, how you would do a realistic uh, data analysis. Uh, and finally, uh, there are additional two resources. This is uh, SPM book. So this book uh, came out quite a long time ago, 2007, but uh, especially in, in terms of classical inference, it contains all the basics that, that haven't really changed since then. And uh, I think also in terms of social construction and based on inference and the basics uh, of the CM, I think the information in this book is, uh, is, is not outdated. And if you want to really uh, take a deep dive into theory, I think this book is useful. And uh, you can also use uh, the code itself. So the code is open source and mostly uh, well documented. So, so if you really want to, to get into the details of how SPM work and find some additional, additional low level documentation, you can look at the code. So as I mentioned, we are trying uh, to move away from uh, PDF manual, and uh, this uh, is uh, this we're doing this via this new uh, documentation website with a link uh, link here at the bottom. So this contains more or less uh, the same material uh, that you can see in the manual, but in a more uh, up to date, uh, more flexible format that is also easier to maintain and easier to contribute to. So so there's some uh, bits of documentation that we already. Uh, added to, to this uh, website and they are not in the manual. So if you really uh, want to, to look at the most up-to-date stuff, particularly about OPMs, uh, so this is all in this new documentation website and we will slowly uh, get rid of the PDF version and uh, move completely to, the, to this uh, web documenting. Uh, also at the main SPM website, you can find the links to several uh, example data sets, both for MRI and for, for EG and MEG uh, that you can, uh, that you will use also on the fourth day uh, of the course, if you want to, you can also use your own data uh, to, to, to do some practical uh, analysis with SPM. Uh, there are also pages uh, on the website linking to different toolboxes that, that people developed over the years uh, to do different uh, analysis that main SPM doesn't do. Uh, some of them are uh, for EG and MEG, uh, some that are for other uses, but also uh, can be relevant as part of EG and MEG uh, pipelines. So you're welcome to explore uh, this page as well. And uh, we still have our SPM mailing list, which is the main, uh, for the moment, remains uh, the main uh, forum for general discussions. So maybe if you want to report a bug, uh, you can do uh, you can do it either via mailing list, maybe better via GitHub. But if you just have a question to the community, not necessarily to, to the main SPM developers, but just to everyone, I want to advertise a, a job or look for a job, then uh, this kind of, this uh, uh, website, uh, uh, this uh, mailing list uh, is a good uh, resource. So yeah, so I think that uh, more or less summarizes uh, the, this introductory bit. So just uh, uh, I want to list and thank, uh, maybe it's probably a non-exhaustive list, but uh, there's a major people who contributed to SPM over uh, the last uh, 35 uh, or so years. And uh, hopefully you will get uh, trained now and you can join both as a user group and with time also maybe the developers of our users of SPM and maybe your name uh, will be on this list one day. So I hope you enjoy the course and uh, good luck.